We left off with facing, roughing, and finishing the part. As we continue on, now we need to do a thread relief and threading operation. So once we know that we got to this far, we're ready to proceed and finish up the part with the grooving threading procedures. Now let's begin the threading and the grooving part of it. As you can see the image here, it has a toolpath up here. There's two ways we can remove that. One way of removing it is coming over here and touching toggle display on selected operation. So all these are selected. So as I touch this, it turns them on or off. If I want to look at the lathe face, I can turn it on or off. I can select them all, turn them off, select just the lathe face. Turn it on, select just the lathe rough, turn it on, turn it off, or the finished. So another operation that you can see that you're learning in here is how to use the tool, toolpath uh, manager over here to change and see toolpath. So let's just turn them all off, and we're pretty good. Now a little hint, there is a hotkey, Alt-T, does the same thing in it. And in, in this area here, you can see it's turning off. If I select them all, Alt-T turns them on, Alt-T turns them off, Alt-T, Alt-T. So get used to it. Uh, again, select the operation, see the toolpath for just that one, and you can continue on. So this diamond, uh, this triangle here, allows you to start your next toolpath. So we're here, do not have it in any other area, or that's where your next toolpath, and it gets out of order. So keep an eye on this part right here. Let's continue on. The toolpath we want to use is toolpath groove. Now once we select groove, a dialog box appears and explains the different types of grooves. I'm only concerned at this point to get through the lecture is the chain. We're going to use a set of entities to create a toolpath that allows us to remove this section of the material. And that's something to look at too. As you can see, we have a, a material a stock recognition that the lathe does. It shows the material that has been removed. So we're going to choose this and we're going to make sure it's at manual and we're going to hit check. And just like we chain anything else, we start and we finish where we want the chain to go to. Now I want you to go to the far end here because we do have a little lip here if we don't. I'll hit check. And now this is where we actually build our custom tool. We're going to look for a tool here and we're going to go through the process to edit this tool that we have here. We're going to look for tool number let me see right here, tool number 444, okay? It's already existing as a width of 125. It's an OD groove and it's narrow. So we're gonna right button mouse click on it and edit that tool. And in here, we're taking a look at the insert. This type of tool that we're using, it's for grooving or parting. And we're gonna do some general turning with it, or excuse me, gro grooving or parting. We use that for that tool. So the type of grooving that we'll use with it, it could be straight down or across. It's a special tool. The insert is the most important. We want to get this as accurate as possible. Well, we have measured the insert on the D value, and we come up with a value of not an eighth of an inch, but 119 of our tool. So now we're more accurate. In the holder now, the D value has to be less than that D value here, or we're going to get our holder, it's not going to show the cut. So we can come over here and we can put something smaller than 119. If we want to put 0.1, we could do that. 93, anything you want at this time, we can go out there and measure it. But 93 was the one we came up with. The parameters, this tool now under the parameters tab. So we went through the insert tab, holder tab, and parameter tab. We want this to be tool number six, 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 and six set to this we're going to default the chip load for this type of tool at two thousandths of an inch the spindle speed for this tool that we're going to use it is going to be 1500 the coolant will be on check so in the parameters page we're setting all the definitions we want from it uh we're going to count comp cutter compensation from this point in this point in class, we had the lecture of how that works. So when we set up our tools and calibrate them for the machine, we're using it off this for this tool. Uh, we'll give it a new name. We're going to call this 
um, FCC 0.119, right, with tool. We'll just give it up that name. And we'll save that to library. And we'll just take the default, save it there, not make a custom library. And we'll replace it, say yes. So now we have all our parameters that we want. And now if I hit check, our tool that we just designed should be here, even the name. So we just designed this tool. Our feeds and speeds here, our max speed we didn't set on there. So we're going to come in here and do the same thing and make that at 2500. Turn on a coolant. Again, we can turn that on in the future. But right now at the beginning, so we made our tool. It's tool number six. We go to the next groove shape. We'll take the defaults here. I won't explain these in the beginning right now. As we go further, we'll learn more about different ways of grooving. Groove rough parameters. We're going to do a bi-directional. We can do a positive, which you can see it only comes one way. We can do a negative, which goes one way to finish it. But we're going to do a bi-directional, which will go both ways. Or chain direction, which will follow the chain, which is kind of cool. I always use bi-directional. It just seems like it works better. We're going to need 5,000 for the X and 5,000 for the, uh, the Z, so we can come back and finish it. We'll take all the defaults, leave them alone. And so in this page right here, we're not even going to change anything. On the finish parameters, we're going to just allow, the, again, this information to stay the same. There's only one thing we need, really need to change, and that's lead in, lead out for this part. We want to lead in. Now, this is important. It's not lead in, lead out. I should say lead first passed in, second pass lead in. So they're both lead ins. We want to drop it straight down when we lead in. And if we do another pass, we want to drop it straight down as we lead in again. So there's nothing to do with lead out. It's all about leading in. And once I hit that, we can review again. Toolpath 6 is our tool. Feed rate is 2,000 chip loads. So we're going to get a nice finish, a consistent finish that we're going to be getting. 1,500 spindle speed and the max there at 2,500. Coolant will be on. Take the defaults for the groove shape parameters. The default for the rough parameters. And the groove finish parameter, the only thing we set, again, was lead in. And that lead in passes straight in. And lead second pass in is straight in. And we will accept that information and hit check. And as you can see, the tool will come in and create a tool path. Let's verify that. So as it comes in, the tool is going to be coming in. It's going to start picking away. Yeah, we already removed that stuff. I could have added more geometry. I'm just worried about it in there. And I want to make sure I clear all that material out. And there you go. There's our finished pass, and it'll clean it out. We can verify this. I'll select here to here because this is where we're at. So if I select these operations, it will show it in the verify that they're already done. I just want to see this one. So, I mean, excuse me, if I just select this one, these will be shown already done. If I just select this one, it will show all those machine because of stock recognition. And I just want to look at that. I can slow this down, and you can see it cut the part. It's going to come in. And finish it up right there. So we blended that in there. That's why I left it there. I know there's a couple moves I can remove the code out of there. But as a beginner, I think that's going to be pretty nice. So you can see this, how it comes up. And it actually did do our part for it. And again, our tool is in translucent. If you remember how to make it solid, we can just select it and turn it. And now it's solid. And that's that 0.93 distance. And that's our, our area of our part here, too. Our... 1.119 that should be good for that let's go back here we see the tool we'll save that now that we have the thread relief done the grooving we're going to add a thread toolpath come up to toolpath thread and in here you notice we didn't have to select any geometry again much like when we did the facing that's very important. Some students in the beginning try to select something to chain and there's nothing to be chained. We're going to use this tool number T9797. It's a right-handed threading tool. Uh, we will use that to um, create our thread that we're going to do. And the way we're going to edit this is set it up for our machine. Again, we can right button mouse click on it 
edit tool or we can double click on it to edit the tool and this is our default tool that we're using it's the same one we have in the machine the holder on the other hand is still going to be the same it's a half inch the a is a one inch tool holder that we're using then the last the parameters is what we want to change we want to change this to tool number two because that's the location in our spindle don't worry about the feed rate here we will set the compensation off the center and we can call this our our um it's already called the right tool but we'll call it the tool number t0202 so we're given names and we'll save that to the library and we'll overwrite it says do you want to replace it yeah i'll replace the existing one that i have in there so now we have this right-handed tool that's all set up for what we need don't worry again about the feed rate but we do want to worry about what the coolant and we're going to turn the coolant on and you notice we're not using constant surface we can't use that with um, a threading we have to use an inch per minute so and that's a lot what we use when we use certain different tools because this is going to go back and chase itself over to keep the thread constant so our real parameters that we're going to set up is in the thread shape parameters this tells us what we're using well we know from the drawing that this area here should be a half 13. well the lead is a lead we can type in 13 here that's our lead but we don't know unless we have a book to measure major minor diameter we can choose the major out here which is a half inch but I didn't create a minor down here so this is not our minor that's a thread relief it's actually less than that uh, this is less than the, the minor so what we can do using mastercam we can come up here to this area it says select from table and in here we can choose our thread forms and the one we're going to be looking for is this unc unf which we will be able to find the thread that we're looking for and that thread we're looking for is a half 13 as we scroll down we can look at the basic the major diameter or the minor diameter and we can trust find half inch here's half inch the lead is 13 inches oh excuse me 13 revolutions per inch our major diameter is half inch and our minor is this and you can see it will work when we get in here so it's a lot this is a larger than this when this is only 400 this is just a little bit over uh, 10 thou so it gives us a nice little thread release that we're going to have when i choose this it will set my tables for me look gave me my lead it gave me my angle because of the tool the thread angle the major diameter and the minor diameter so by choosing this we're able to select the one we want so if i wanted a quarter 20 i would come down here and look for quarter 20 and it will create my lead my major and my minor so this is really helps you so it refers back to our machinist handbooks and sets up our information automatically i'll go back to my 13 and the end condition well when we looked at the original drawing from here to here our thread distance was correct 0.75 we're at one inch so we can't leave it there so we can say the end position will be at this point here and you can see it's 75 but if we stop there we're going to probably have some burr right here where our, our our bolt or where we screw into will not pass so i always add about plus excuse me a minus 0.03 a minus plus a minus increases the amount we're going to go to so now we came over past this line here 30,000 so we sure that our thread will go all the way through and when we screw it in there will be no stopping the last thing is thread parameters i do like only one thing in here to set oh excuse me two things and that we use the nc code format is going to be longhand in the class we're not going to use a can cycle we're going to use longhand and a number of spring passes three so you can see how much it flexes you're going to learn to see that that thread as it cuts at that far sticking out it there's some flex in there so we have to cut at zero finish passes three times to get rid of any kind of flexing of the tool and once we hit check again i set my back here and you can see it come in you can see it lead in i can change the lead in amount I can always go back into my expansion here go to my parameters and if that's just too far of a lead in we can change that right here in the last page of thread cut if i want to go less than that i can go a hundred thousandths 
and now watch what happens. It'll shorten that by half the distance, regen, and you can see there it is. So you can choose what you want. I like to go out a little bit further just to be safe. As a beginner, it doesn't hurt to keep it at two. And we'll extend it out there. And again, it'll just start leading in and out of there. Now that our grooving and threading is done, let's go ahead and verify this two parts that we do here. Again, I'm not going to watch the whole thing. I'm going to select the two I want to see because the stock recognition will show it on the verification. And I'm going to bring it in. I'll move it at an angle so we can see it a little bit. We'll slow it down, precision's up, and we'll run it. So it's going to come in and do my grooving. I see that there's a lot of wasted movements. I'm not going to stress out about it this time. And now our threading, as you can see, our threading is coming past there. So it's blowing it away. You can see that? It's going through there. Now, one thing you want to look at that this is not what do you call it, true thread looking, right? It's just not a thread, basically. It's not doing a helical. But if we want to see that, it takes more generation of your computer to do that. So let's go ahead and set this up. We'll come over to verify. And we want to turn on true thread. So you can see we do have menus how to see it. We can see, see it in a single view, two views, two view columns, four views. Restore default view or single view. We can see it in an isometric form. We can fit it to screen. We can look at the top, the right, the front. We can also go back to home, and this is where I chose the colors. This is where I can turn off the stock. Or we can go to verify and see certain information, for instance, true threads. True threads modes require a current verification to restart. Do you want to continue? Yes, I want to start again. I'm going to go to my view, hit my top, make it fit to screen. And if I want to bring it in, I can use my middle mouse button and roll it in to see it closer. So now that's about a good view there. I'll hit play. And it's going to go a little bit slower, so I'm just going to speed this up hit play and now it'll come in and it'll generate true threads see the helical move two three four five six seven eight tool pass there and as you can see it is finished it made it real helical even give the lead in as it will because of our chamfer we set up so we have a really good looking bolt there and the end result coming into it it will blend out and allow the thread to continue until this bottoms out now that thread amount should have came into question how do you know how many threads do well the default under here uh, tells you um it tells you exactly how many threads you're going to get out of it. The number of cuts is five. So I counted eight, five of these with three finished passes. I can increase this if I wanted to, but it kind of determines based off your table that you choose how many threads it takes to do it. I hates a lot for me, but as a beginner, it is good to learn how to control this information. All right, the last thing we need to do here is do these curves and part off. I have a new way of parting off the part that I would love to show you. Again, always save and continue on.